In this video, I want to show you an amazing new feature in uh, Excel 2013 that's called the Timeline uh, to be used with a pivot table. So uh, here's typical data that we make a pivot table from. These happen to be airline transactions. Uh, I want to show you that the first row has your field names. It's fairly important for the pivot table. And I also want to show that uh, column A has uh, dates. Uh, so you need some kind of date field to do this next feature. It's called a Timeline. So let's make a quick pivot table. I'll just pick on one cell that's not blank. I'll pick on the insert menu. I'll pick on pivot table. Now it usually picks the proper range for you up here. And I'm going to put it on a new worksheet. So I'll just click on OK. And here we are on the uh, actual pivot table screen. Uh, so I want to make a, a quick cross reference by office by airline. So I'm going to pick up office and drag it to the rows. And then I'll pick up airline and drag it to the columns. And then to add some data to the pivot table, you move something to the value section. I'll pick up the total field and drag it to the value section. And now, actually, with those three steps, we have a cross-reference by office by airline. I mean, the pivot table is just so amazing. I have a lot of other videos on pivot tables as well. But now, let's talk about the timeline. So you pick on one cell that's not blank. And in 2013, you're going to have two additional menus. One's called Analyze and one's called Design. Let me pick on Analyze. And then here's one that's called Insert Timeline. There's also one that's called Insert Slicer. On a different video, I'll talk about how to use the Insert Slicer. But here's the Insert Timeline. Now, it's going to try to see which fields are your date fields. So I'll pick on the field that is called Date. If there was more than one, there would be listed there. And I'll click on OK. Now, it tries to uh, simulate all the different dates that are there. So let's go way back. I have some data from 1999. And let's say I just want to see the data from February of 1999. So I'm going to click on that. And notice how the numbers change because this is only the data from February of 1999. I'm going to click on May of 1999. And you're going to see that the numbers changed again. In fact, I can, move, I, I can pick multiple months by dragging this back and forth. And you can see how the numbers change. So you can do like a date range like that. Uh, so you just highlight the, da the dates that you want. Or let's go into um, 2000, and I'll pick on January. And uh, let, let's uh, drag that across again. And there must not be any from January. Uh, so let's go back to 1999. Uh, I'll do the first quarter of 1999. We'll do January, February, and March. And you can see how the numbers changed. So it's really interesting. I can pick one month. I can pick uh, as many months as I wanted to. And that's called a timeline. Really, very really quickly. Uh, allows you to do a date range uh, or a, a scalable date range here on a pivot table. So I'm going to get all my data back by clicking on the uh, funnel up here. And now you have all the data back again. So let's see how I open up the timeline. Let me put that away. I'm going to right click on it and say remove timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pick on one cell that's not blank. I'll pick on analyze. And insert timeline is only available in Excel 2013. Whereas the insert slicer started in Excel 2010. I do have another video about that. I'll say insert timeline. You pick the field that is your date field. And I'll click on OK. And then the timeline appears. And at that point you can pick whichever month that you wanted to. Or even more than one. And then it will show the data for that date range. Very powerful new feature. It's called a timeline in Excel 2013.